and Otaba Emmanuel. Congratulations, St. Henry's College Chito, for making it to the semi finals of OSA Nationals 2023. And in your position, we shall have Green Hill Academy. Lamaro Cynthia. A round of applause again for Lamaro Cynthia. You've just taken breakfast. A round of applause for Lamaro Cynthia. Mohereza Melissa. Mohereza Melissa, sorry. And then Namaya and Victoria. Congratulations, Green Hill Academy, for making it the semifinals of USA 20. I'll leave you to the chair to give you the rules of this round, then we can start. IT team, are we ready? Are we ready? Festo, social media team, is Festo wrong? Okay, Festo will be, uh, this room will be streamed on YouTube, and the other room will be on Twitter spaces. So for those on Twitter and those on YouTube, you look for UNSA, USSDC on YouTube, and UNSA. Spirit. For the record, you might want them up here so, uh, so that this guys are recording this. Just for the record. The, the camera people are using uh, this podium, so you might want to stand here and just brief the team with the motion and then we can start. Can I have the third microphone if possible? This house supports the establishment of the HIV AIDS product uh, public recruitment. Dear yeah, yeah. that's the motion that we are faced with at this particular time. One dear yeah, yeah. you must note that just by the statement of the motion, we are faced by two problems in the current status quo. One is being the HIV transmission, two is stigma. One, now dear yeah, yeah, you must note that entirely in this debate, you must judge this debate based on who better solves the current problems in the status quo. And as such, yeah, yeah, we want to think that whatever model they present as opposition should be justified in doing that. One, dear yeah, judge, yeah, we must note that one, we are dealing with people that are suffering from HIV and largely, dear yeah, judge, yeah, these are people that are defined by one, the stigma that is associated with the disease, the people that are suffering a life-altering disease, dear yeah, judge, yeah, three, dear yeah, judge, yeah, these are people that are looked at as the people that have poor immunity and as such a threat from opportunistic diseases. That is very correct. That is the kind of HIV victim that we are trying to defend in today's debate. And dear judge, we are trying to uh, think that likely in today's debate, we are supposed to look at exactly what happens, what is expected, what is supposed to happen after a diagnosis of HIV. We think that dear judges, what must be taken into consideration after one land of their status is one, therapy, two, counseling, three, emotional reconstruction, and four, largely acceptance. Now, dear judge, I want us to note that in a, in, a, in, a, in a facility where these people are not actually, uh, where the people outside do not actually know the kind of status that these people are having, we cannot achieve an inclusive society that guarantees the above mentioned strategies that have been mentioned. Dear judge, we must note that Vision 2030 has, the, has it to heart that we must have ended the spread of HIV by then. That means that we are faced with an urgency of seven years' time to have made some kind of vision. And as such, yeah, we think we need an extreme measure that can accelerate us to achievement of such a vision. Dear yeah, judge, yeah, we must also note that in today's kind of debate, we must only understand that the fight against HIV is not entirely for the people that are suffering from HIV alone. We think that these kinds of people that are suffering from HIV need a healthy hand. And as such, dear yeah, judge, yeah, that is the kind of inclusive society that we are trying to create by establishing this kind of public record. Dear yeah, judge, yeah, we must note that in the very first place, this public shall be argued by team government as a source of stigma. But then, dear judge, we must note that not the stigma that is still happening after the kind of mindset that the, that the people of Uganda have had, dear judge, about this kind of disease. We must note that the kind of stigma that is happening are statements, are, are impulsive statements that are being made by the people who are ignorant about the status of the people that are just next to them. Dear judge, we think that by creating 
think that by creating an inclusive society, we are sure that this kind of stigma is not going to happen. And dear judge, in an event that this kind of stigma is happening, dear judge, we think that we now as the government have a more upper hand in incriminating whoever poses this kind of stigma because they now have the knowledge that this person that they are discriminating against or they are present a prejudice against is a very important disease. Now, dear judge, I want us to note that one, we are looking at what the kind of uh, at the sanctity and quality of life that we in, we tend to achieve as team government. But before that, dear judge, we want to think that the metrics of support on which this kind of debate is supposed to run all through is one, utilitarianism, two, urgency and necessity, dear judge. And as such, dear judge, I think that what best suits the actor in, this, in today's kind of debate, we think that the government of Uganda is supposed to be the one that are achieving the most of this kind of debate. And as such, dear judge, we think that by eradication of the kind of stigma as earlier noted, dear judge, is going to happen. Two, we think that we are going to achieve uh, a less HIV transfer mission in the society. But then the other, they may pose a question that, hey, wait, what if I know that this person is actually positive and still going for sex with them? I think that the other, after we have made such a, a, a public record, we as the government are providing contraceptives and therefore incentivizing the consumption of such of contraceptives. We are not saying that the people that are having HIV should not have, uh, should not engage in sex, but we are saying that for someone to engage in sex with them, they already have the highlight that this person is infected, and therefore, as such, dear judge, we think that this person is supposed to consume the contraceptive, especially the condom. Yeah, we think that, dear judge, the medication that these people are supposed to have is not just entirely ARVs, but dear judge, I want us to note that these people need food, these, these people need uh, uh, right medication, especially in terms of food and lifestyle that they lead. And dear judge, as such, we think that as the government that has provided organizations that can easily provide this, we are helping them to achieve their duty to extend a healthy life, especially the people that are suffering from HIV and are not able to sustain such a livelihood. We think that, dear judge, we also need and uh, we also need, dear judge, consumption of more services, such as the counseling services that have been put in place, because we think that the fight against HIV is not entirely supposed to be a battle that is fought alone. We think that, dear judge, by making an inclusive society where the people that are suffering from HIV can actually interact with the people that are suffering from uh, are, are, are negative of the disease, it could be a more important, a more powerful way for us to, pre to spring and into the achievement of uh, Vision 2030. They may argue in their next speech that one, that the people that are supposed to disclose their status are largely supposed to be out of choice. Well, dear judge, we want to think that that is very true and very correct. They deserve the choice to make. But here, dear judge, we think that we are supposed to weigh in on how many people are most likely forced to a threat of the people that they, of engaging in sexual intercourse with the people that they do not, whose status they do not know, and then compare and understand that at such a time when everyone knows the kind of status you're having, it would be much better for them to uh, take the necessary preventive measures against you. And as that, dear judge, we think that the government, on the issue of choice, we have the social contract theory, or the Machiavellian, uh, or the Machiavellian Nicolo philosophy that says that as government, we have the right to infringe on your rights if it is largely to the benefit of the other people. And as such, dear judge, I think you had a speech. Yes. Now, dear judge, I want us to know that by not disclosing this kind of status, one, we are, by not disclosing the, reserving this kind of status, we are depriving the people of information. And for us to achieve a team, for us to achieve an inclusive society, we need the people that are supposed to take part in this inclusive society to be aware, to be informed, dear judge. And as that, we cannot achieve such a society if these people do not have the kind of information to create a harmonious society or an environment for the people that are living with HIV. Dear judge, we must also note that as this government, ah, we must also note that at the end of the day, as this government, we think that one, on the grounds of stigma, dear judge, we win because one, it is or it is usually after this kind of mindset change, I want us to take note, dear judges, that after the kind of mindset change that the people of Uganda have gone through, in, especially through awareness creation, dear judge, we think that the most stigma that is happening currently is out of ignorance. These are impulsive and just random statements that people are making without knowing what impact they could have on the, on the, app, on the people that are living with HIV just next to them. And as such, dear judge, by giving them information, we are trying to cover this. To the other, we think that on the same ground, it would be a better way for the government to incriminate the people that are posing such prejudices. And dear judge, at the end of the day, we, we think that uh, we have a bigger basis to incriminate you or to punish you as someone that carries out such prejudice. We think that, dear judge, at the end of the day, the actor in this motion is more satisfied because we are achieving the fight against stigma. Two, we are achieving the low, uh, the low transmission rates. Three, dear judge, we are achieving the consumption of the contraceptives and other unutilized uh, resources, dear judge. I want us to also note that, dear judge, at the end of the day, what we need for us in the battle of HIV is an inclusive society. And what we need after learning that I am having a disease that is life 
me. That is a disease that uh, I'm going to carry with my thoughts and breath. I think that what I need at that time, in that kind of mental trauma, is someone to tell me that at the end of the day, this is not the kind of disease, this does not mean the end of your life. Because we know that at the end of the day, when people are subject to HIV, they even get, and they are on right treatment and right condition, they can even sustain their lives up to another 40 years or so, or so dear dad. And as such, dear dad, I think that for us to create such a society, we need the people that are supposed to be harmonious in this kind of inclusive society to have the kind of information. Dear judge, the Lord is faithful and big to our family. Three, two, one. Chair. A major mistake we get from the affirmative side is assuming that we live in an incredibly rational society. They think that people in society are inherently people who know necessarily about HIV AIDS and to this extent they know information about AIDS. But that's an assertion. Let me show you why this is true. We think largely at a point in time where the government has provided more than enough information about HIV AIDS and we still have things like stigma because of the nature of the conservative society that we have at the end of the day, this particular model cannot be applied. Resolved. This house supports the establishment of the HIV AIDS public record. Chair, one thing that they run away from is actually explaining the nature of this particular public health record. But let me go into depth and show you this. We think that one, the public health record is one that shows your HIV status, your viral load, your medication behavior, I repeat, your medication behavior, which includes intake of ARVs and your consistency in this. I'll show you why this is important, right? The government give us arguments on one, um, reducing HIV transmission, two, stigma, reducing stigma, and three, um, things like therapy, and then they give us three models, right? Urgency and utilitarianism, necessity, and um, basically, that's what they give us. I'm going to show you why one, not only do these arguments exist on both sides of the world, but two, they're more achieved on our side of the world. And last but not least, I'm going to show you why inherently the model is detrimental. Sure, understand the major stakeholders you have in this debate. One, the government. Two, society. Three, the people that have HIV AIDS at the end of the day. We think largely the government is important in this particular debate because the government is a decision-making body of a country. That means that they make decisions that they benefit from it directly, right? That means that government is then rational and sits down and makes decisions that the people can actually benefit from it. We think that putting this particular model does not benefit government. I'm going to show you why. Two. HIV positive people. We think as beautifully characterized by the first affirmative speaker, these are people that go through stigma already in status quo. Not because people don't know that HIV exists, but because of the narratives that people actually have against HIV AIDS. Knowing that you have HIV AIDS won't change my idea of how I think about HIV AIDS. At a point in time where society thinks that AIDS is spread through promiscuity and other sorts of things, doesn't mean that me knowing that you have HIV AIDS at the end of the day will stop my idea of what I think or how you got HIV AIDS, right? Two, they come and talk about um, the whole idea of society. We think that this does not inherently benefit society. I'm going to show you why. Chair, we think that at a point in time where the affirmative team assumed that things that have been in status quo have actually not been working is wrong. We think necessarily in current status quo, we have reduction in the HIV prevalence rates. This is because the, the, the reason there is this particular is not accepted, the reason there is substantial growth in HIV fighting status quo is because the, of the relationship, this decision making body, the government, has with society and with HIV positive people, right? Chair, sure. we need to understand one thing, right? We need to understand the type of society we live in. I already told you society is conservative, and the government providing this particular information won't change the ideologies of HIV AIDS. 
to just give them information on knowing who to stigmatize, who to run away from, and who to do this, right? Chia, key things you need to understand. The HIV positive people, we think that these are people who have already gone through enough in society. We think things like health status are sacred and you only make them positive in society when you only make them public when it's important to you or when you want to know it. This is why we have the element of choice on our side of the house. I want to show you that why even when they try to frame up the element of choice is actually inherently important in this debate. We think largely because of the element of choice that you have in status quo, people with HIV are able to assess to know when it's safe to actually reveal my status at the end of the day, right? That is the nature of these particular things. It means that people knowing whether I take my ARVs or not, knowing my viral load and knowing when inherently I have the most viral load. This means that things like stigmatization then exist largely at a point in time. It means that they are blaming me for simple mistakes as for getting to take my tablets at the end of the day, maybe because of a busy work schedule at the end of the day. This is something that they don't account for on the side of the house, right? Chair. We think that for affirmative to have actually had a standard split, would have shown us the necessity of actually taking this step. We think more than it, it is not necessary because the things that they bring for us, like reducing HIV transmission, are being worked on in stigma when current status quo. The things like uh, um, providing contraceptives are already there. Government provides free condoms. They do this without telling people who is HIV positive. They do this without telling you who has ARVs, who is taking the ARVs, or who is not taking the ARVs. These things actually exist on both sides of the world. We think at a point in time where we talk, they talk about stigma, they don't, uh, they don't show us how inherently telling you who has HIV and who does not actually have HIV uh, reduces stigma. They talk about things like therapy, counseling, and emotional reconstruction. Let me show you how this one already exists in status quo, and two, they actually destroy emotional reconstruction on the side of the house. We think that organizations like TASO that provide therapy yeah, in status quo. Yeah. Yes, I'll take you. How best does your mother regulate? How best does your mother cater for incriminating people that are committing stigma? I was getting to that. Anyway, they talk about um, 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 how these things of, of stigma exist, I mean, reducing things like counseling. One, they already exist in status quo, and actually, people go to do that, right? Two, we think that emotional reconstruction does not exist on that side of the house. Notice the nature of conservative society we have right now. That even with the widespread information that they said about HIV AIDS, people still continue to nurture their whole idea of actually how HIV AIDS. This is why people choose, people choose to believe what they want to believe, not what government tells them to believe at the end of the day. Which yeah, we think that this is unnecessary, unnecessary on the side of the house. They talk about urgency. It is not urgent to go against someone's right of privacy at the end of the day. We think at a point in time where HIV is being combated in status quo by this particular model that already exists, we do not urgently need to go and tell every Tom, Dick, and Harry that Lamaro Sinta is HIV positive and she's not taking her ARVs. That is not necessary in this debate. When I talk about utilitarian principle, let me show you how this works on our side of the house. We think, one, people will choose to, to maximize their preferences and believe what they want to believe. That means that if I believe that HIV is spread through having sex with every Tom, Dick, and Harry, even when government tells me that HIV is spread through this and this and that, I'll still choose to believe that. That means that I'll be more inclined to stigmatize that person who actually has HIV. Things you're going to get from my side of the house, right? I'm going to give you the, the principle of non maleficence How the government, as a decision body, does not necessarily have to cause needless harm to their particular people. My particular, my second speaker is going to come and show you how harm is more on that side of the house and how, how harm can be actually reduced on that side of the house. Why we do not need to have people knowing who has HIV AIDS at the end of the day, right? Two, I'm going to talk about the right of privacy and autonomy, even when they try to frame it out. This is something that is very important in this debate, right? Why? When people's right to privacy are actually People will be targeted, feel targeted by society at the end of the day. They will be pushed away by society at the end of the day. This looks like stigmatization on three levels. Stigmatization on one, an individual level where I will feel targeted by society and move on to society. Two, society stigmatizing my family because they started to know that someone else has HIV at the end of the day. And last but not least, stigmatization on a huge societal basis that creates a rift between society. Right? I'm going to show you how the modern in our second speech creates a rift between government and people, which actually reduces the problems that we already have in status quo. As I showed you, the reason we have substantial growth is because the government is actually working, right? Chia, we're going to show you how this is not necessarily a good mode at the end of the day. We're going to give you the harm space for the end of the day. At a point in time where something actually benefits people less and actually has more harms at the end of the day, we have to forego it. This model is not necessary. We do not necessarily need to actually do this, right? The government talk about mindset. At a point in time where mindset is already flawed, like we say in the school, how does knowing someone who has HIV, how does knowing someone who is taking the ARVs change the mindset of people? They don't mechanize these arguments. These are purely assertions from the side of the house. I rest.
they are judged. They argue on issues. I like to you that at the end of the at the, at the end of it all, the codons are the, there is better encouragement for a person to take their medication once there is community to back them up. That is what we mean by togetherness in the fight against HIV. They are judged. That is what we want to have at the end of the day. They come to tell us that at the end of the day, uh, the government is providing free codons, and we accept that. That is why when my partner has HIV, when a person, uh, my partner has HIV, and I know their status through this uh, uh, through this public uh, information, I will be in a better position to actually adapt a condom. Dear judge, we have looked at the problem where the youth and the dif and different people do not want to adapt uh, condoms. Dear judge, is this an incentive for people to adapt condoms and uh, prevent the transmission of HIV at the end of the day? We, do, we look at their case being me and their rebuttals being uh, non not considered in this debate. They come and tell us that you, we are facing a conservative society. We are facing a society that is based on principles of stigmatization. But we come to show you that uh, teaching and uh, teaching awareness has actually worked before. We have shown you organizations like TASO that reduce stigma from the very beginning. And we believe at the end of the day, this will actually solve the problem of a conservative society that they highlight in our case, dear judge. They come to show us that uh, sex may not be the only way that there is transmission, but yeah, that, that is the major and the predominant way that uh, transmission is actually occurring. So by virtue of the fact that we are creating an incentive for people to adapt the use of condoms, and that is preventing transmission through sex at the end of the day, we are actually solving the issue of HIV transmission that we highlight in our past speech. Even, even further, once we solve the problem of transmission at sex, that means even when children, uh, when people uh, attain pregnancies, we shall solve the problem of mother to child transmission because at the end of the day, there will be no transmission at birth because it was no, uh, the virus was not attained uh, during sex, dear judge. They come to show us that there will be stigmatization to family. But dear judge, according to the info slide, there is no slight area where family is indicated. And even if it were to be indicated, dear judge, the family are, we do realize that all members of the, all members that are having the virus will actually be on this platform and we do not believe that the family will be isolated rather we will show you that stigma will not stand in this debate here yeah, that we come to frame for you who an HIV person is a person who has experienced stigma and a person who has poor immunity and they come to debate where a world where we are going to groom uh, stigma in silence while we show you that we are creating a world where we are going to publicly uh, annihilate the problem of stigma at the end of it all dear judge you should be supporting our side and we show you the aspect of individualism in their case in fighting the disease and we show you the aspect of togetherness dear judge and that is why we believe our case is actually better than theirs dear judge we show you that at the end of the day we are going to encourage more medication people are going to take more in more medication we frame for you what medication is and how it will be better encouraged in our case where the society is being is backing up in this fight. Yeah, that we realize that a person who has been diagnosed with uh, HIV at the end of the day needs therapy, needs emotional uh, reconstructions, needs acceptance in society, and we look at that as achieved in our case than in their theater. We show them the urgency of this case, and we show them that it is Vision 2030, where we have to uh, create an inclusive and harmonious environment to set up uh, for our people with HIV. At the end of it all, we are going to create uh, a world which is going to accumulate and accept. That is what we are preaching for the agenda. And acceptance for these HIV victims. The society will actually accept these people. At the end of it all, we are looking at the problem of HIV. So, let me slow down to our arguments real quick, the agenda. We come and show you that there is medical encouragement in that when the society is backing you up, you will, they will encourage you. They will say it where you have not taken your meds properly. Maybe you are lacking on in on food. Some people may not afford food. The society will come in to support you in your struggle, the agenda. And at the end of it all, we shall look at better uh, fighting of the virus when these people have it here. We can show, we show you that at the end of it all, we are going to have alienation of stigma because we are looking at a new method and the methods they have highlighted have been existed in the status quo and they have failed here. We highlight for you a new strategy that is actually going to solve the problem at the end of it all. What does that strategy bring about? Acceptance in the community. The agent is in that a world you would rather live in. The agent a world where HIV victims are accepted and supported so that we can combat this, uh, this disease. The agent. We show you that at the end of it all, we shall have cautious measures by people to prevent this transmission. The agent. We show you that transmission of HIV is a problem in the status quo. The agent. We show you that at the end of it all, once I know that this person has a uh, my uh, my friend, this person that I am planning to meet in sexual relations actually has HIV. We show you that at the end of the day, I am going to take the necessary precautions because the website, the public information has actually confirmed that I need to take precautions. I was really looking at more adaptation of the condoms.
the contraceptives that Congrats are going to prevent transmission of HIV, they are judged. Isn't that a, a solution to the problem at the end of the day? They are judged. They are judged. We look at the different, uh, the, uh, we look at the problem whereby cautious measures could be taken by one person to prevent the spread of HIV. But when this information is accessible to the public, an acceptance that has been preached by team proposition is actually seen in this case. We look at actually uh, the precautious and the precautiousness being emphasized in our case, DJ. We tell you that it is better for statistic, uh, for keeping statistics in our case, DJ. The government will be able to keep statistics of these people and monitor their health, monitor them and give them the adequate medical services, DJ. This is the world we want to create. A world where HIV is monitored, a world where transmission is less, a world where we have victim inclusiveness. DJ, we show you that transmission in our case is actually very minimal because we are employing trans, uh, contraceptives, that is condoms that are going to prevent the transmission. At the end of it all, we are preventing transmission at birth and also mother child transmission because we are going to make sure that if my partner, if I'm going to engage in sexual activity with my partner, I will have to check on their viral load on the website and at the end of it all, I will realize they have undetectable viral load. We shall have a child who does not have this virus. Yeah, that is in that controlling mother child transmission. We look at the major two aspects of transmission in the status quo being so dear that is in that a better case at the end of the day, dear judge. We do realize that this this issue should be dealt with urgency, necessity, and utilitarianism, and that is why team government will take this debate. The Lord is faithful, I beg to rest. I'll start my speech in three, two, one. Dear Panda, notice that the medical department in itself is answerable to a law of, 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 of um, privacy that is signed by the government by the government in itself, right? Now, by the time they infringe on the privacy of their patients, that means that the medical department does not stand a chance. Hence, medical resources are not even important in this world because the medical department has failed on its side of fulfilling its um, burden to the government and society in itself, right? Now. Let us look at let us look at the reason, at the reason of why stigma in itself has been eradicated in status quo today, right? It is eradicated because people have information about what HIV is in itself and how it can affect the patients, not who the patients are, right? Now they come and they tell you that there are organizations that have already information about HIV in itself, right? But you realize that they do not tell you who has it, but they tell you how to deal with people if you found out that they have it, how best to deal with them, not who has it, right? Now they come and they basically show how they are going to try and reduce stigma on their side of the house. But look at this right human beings let us be realistic people are going to choose to believe what they want to believe at the end of the day it doesn't matter if you plan on incriminating them at the end of the day if i choose to believe that this person is harmful towards me then i will not come close to them that means stigmatization whether said or not is still going to happen at the end of the day it's not only hate speech it comes to remo removing people from having their jobs denying them employment and things of that sort because you have this belief that they are not deserving in society right then it might not be direct but it still happens at the end of the day society is still it is still actually very much occurred very much occurs on their side of the house right now let us look at how they fail to show you that it is more likely they fail to show that it is actually likely for society to understand that people have HIV and that they have emotional things to deal with and that maybe they should treat them right, right? They're living in this utopia, this assumption that society is rational, right? Let us look at this world. It's a terrorism in itself. People choose to believe what makes them happy. And at the end of the day, if I, what makes me happy is to believe that someone is harmful to me and that I should not come close to them and it will keep me safe, then I will stigmatize them anyway because it's the best way to get rid of them and get them out of my life at the end of the day. Now, look at the information that's provided in society today. Information provided in society is not provided to those who care about you, but rather to the society in and itself, right? So, if only 5% of the population understands how stigmatization affects HIV patients, then the 95% will not understand what happens to HIV patients as HIV patients as our actors today. They are stigmatized, they are treated unfairly, they suffer emotional trauma, right? Now they're coming to show that they're going to try to detect HIV in and itself, right? Look at this. When someone is stigmatized, everyone knows my status. Probably I forgot to take it because I was busy, right? If at the end of the day, people are pushing me and someone ends up giving up on their life, why not just die rather than being treated like an outcast in society, right? Now, let us show you the ripple effect on their side of the house, right? When there is stigmatization on an individual, already look at the way people perceive HIV in itself as stigmatization, right? They're going to be like everyone around 
around them has probably been cut by this person and they have HIV. This is to of family and society in itself because our family is the first unit we have and then society follows in itself. So we have stigmatization of the society in itself and the government feels on the inside of the country as they try to achieve it because at the end of the day, if people do not feel accepted or deserving in society, then the government has no need to stand because the people there do not believe, do not trust the government because the government has not fulfilled on their side of actually making them feel welcome and well-being. What happens then to the government is that it's voted off to have a government that will be more understanding, that will respect the rights to privacy, right? Now look, we have, we have the body to come and prove to us that by ignoring the right to privacy, yeah, then we can, like, by ignoring the harms that come with ignoring the rights to privacy, right? It will better achieve deterrence as they want to show it. It will better achieve the social contract. It will better achieve the reduction of stigmatization, right? Now look at the world we're having today, right? A conservative world, right? Look at a conservative world in itself. People are entitled to their opinions, right? At the end of the day, we already have information put in place to tell people that, hey, don't treat HIV patients like this. But even then, stigmatization still exists. So what assurance do they have on their side of the house? When you inform people about people oh, with HIV, who they are, please rest. Then they will not be stigmatized, right? Conservative, conservative um, societies look like this. They're not going to change their mind because one more negative is exposed to them who is sick, right? They actually know who to criminalize, how best to actually stigmatize them. Because at the end of the day, if I know who the problem is, I'm going to kick them out of society to avoid other people from suffering, right? The Here stigmatization right. is still something of house. Please rest. Now, individualism on your cards if you choose to maintain autonomy and if you can actually fight HIV on your own, why then be pushed by society, right? They claim that they want to achieve individualism, but if a whole society is telling me what I can and can't do, then I'm being pushed emotionally. Remember, HIV patients suffer emotional trauma from the disease that they have alone in itself, right? What happens then is that people will not take the air of respect for because they're like, at the end of the day, they're going to treat me like an animal. It doesn't matter if my viral load goes low because look at stigmatization. It doesn't matter if your viral load is low. The fact that you have HIV alone is enough to get you stigmatized at the end of the day. Day, right? What happens then is someone will actually deter on how they take their HIV, will touch something their ARVs, and what then we have is people dying more, people feeling more emotionally traumatized and being pushed out of society over very over something that's already being settled in society they by providing them with the information that hey, HIV people can expose to you and you have the incentive to actually accept them and not stigmatize them. That information is there in place. But by providing them with who exactly has it, what happens then is that we have this poor society who are willing, who are extremists, who are willing to go the extra mile to prove to that I do not care about. You. I do not like you. You are a detrimental harm to society in itself, right? Now come and now now come and look at the impact of the side of the house, society on it, right? What happens is that there's stigmatization. I think of stigmatization is isol isolation of the HIV patients, right? In this case, we have like the Mr. Y and Mr. X people not being able to come up and speak about their experiences because hey, they're going to stigmatize me. Half the crowd in this room is going to that I have HIV and how they see me as a very disgusting and very inhumane person, right? Because at the end of the day, what happens when you expose these people? People ignore the information about how HIV patients should be treated, but rather take up the fact that these people have HIV and they do not deserve to be in society at the end of the day, right? And then we look at the government shift. When society realizes that they are being harmed, right, emotionally in itself, right, what happens then they don't vote of the government because at the end of the day, there is harm's principle, right? If I am stigmatized, I am prone to death, I am prone to being unemployed, I am prone to very many things at the end of the day, right? So vote of the government actually and ignore it because at the end of the day, you cannot trust your government because they have failed to imprint to give you the burden, they have failed to fulfill the burden towards society in itself, right? Now we look at the ripple effect of stigmatization in itself, right? From the individual, what we have is that people do not get employment that deserve. But then again, look at the ideology that people have about HIV in itself. This is understandable. Common sense has it. And basically, someone is going to go and say, hey, HIV is spread in very many other ways, right? So maybe I've not slept with your mom, but maybe she cut herself with the same blood you use. So she probably has HIV too. What else is she At the end of the day, the cycle goes on, it grows bigger, and what we have then is a whole society being discriminated and stigmatized because of one from a piece of information that cannot be provided, right? Now let us look at the most valid thing here, privacy in itself, right? The medical department actually is um, answerable to a law of confidentiality. Sorry, excuse me. It's actually entitled to a law of privacy, right? When they fell out on their burden, yes, even if you do have medical resources, people will not come to the hospitals because at the end of the day, why am I going to a doctor who's going to involve the other public into my business at the end of the day? So why don't I just die with my problems? Because at the end of the day, you're actually putting it on the everyone that I am sick, and that means I have no right to come to you for. First of all, therapy sessions that they claim them themselves. If I, I cannot come to you for therapy sessions, if I know I'm already being stigmatized by society in itself, what trust do I have in you? You will not stigmatize me. What trust do I have that you're going to understand? That emotional trauma I'm going through. Will you change that, that, that? Will you change society? Will you change what is going on around me? Will you tell people that hey, don't stigmatize this person because apparently HIV is okay to live with it? No, that's not how society works. Let us be realistic. Stigmatization exists at the and the most detrimental problem we have on their side of the house, right? Now, dear chair, notice that they come and tell something about um. 
They come and they tell you about it in terrorism, urgency, and then you come and be presented as urgency. It is not urgent to intrude your private, someone's privacy. Why? Because at the end of the day, people are already attending clear sessions. There is no biological in the patient in itself currently, right? So it is not urgent to invade on my privacy to put me at the risk of my child at the end of the day, right? It is terrorism. People choose to do what makes them happy, right? People will not understand. For this, I rest my case and vote to see more. Okay, now let us weigh out this, dear judge. 
What happens in a case that yes, I'm fine with my information being on the platform, and yes, people know that I have HIV AIDS, and they are going to treat me the way they want. You understand? Or rather, me keeping my information secret and the public getting to know through other lucrative ways in the back. Yeah, just, I would love to know that there is no stigma in the world where people are getting to know your status, rather than you uh, very well relieving, revealing this through the platform. Yeah, just, so I actually believe that there is more stigma in their case than what we as team government seek to put in this debate. Yeah, just, yeah, judge, not forgetting, we show you the individualism that is in their case, yeah, judge, versus the cooperation that we as team government put in this debate, yeah, judge. We as team government show that there is going to be cooperation, yeah, judge. There is always that one person in society that cares about you but won't bother to tell you. But, yeah, judge, I believe when such life life altering decisions come in your life, when such decisions are threatening in your life, yeah, judge, I actually believe that, yes, society is going to come up and back you up, society is going to come and sit on your, on your neck, society is going to come and lift you from the ground where you sit, yeah, judge. So I actually I believe in the case that we seek to create. We are going to do our with individualism and we are actually going to create a harmonious society whereby those that truly love you are going to come on board and take care of you, dear judge. Now, dear judge, we already go on to tell them, yes, already already we have already seen the effect of condoms and air of dear judge. Dear judge, start by various AIDS-related agencies like UFIA, dear judge, show 90% efficiency of condoms, dear judge. Now, if these if this are already in place, dear judge, and we are still having the HIV prevalence still going high, why do you think some of these things are coming up? Why do you think this 10% is coming up? We as the government believe that the 10% comes in cases where I'm going into unprotected sex with somebody and I don't know their status. So that alone reduces the efficiency of some of these contraceptives. But dear judge, I believe in a world whereby I am sure of this person's of this person's status. I am sure that person A, person B is maybe positive, dear judge. I actually believe that in this case, dear judge, we are going to take more stringent preventive methods, dear judge. We are going to ensure a hundred percent. We are going to ensure a hundred percent safety in our world, which actually team with team opposition to Dear judge, we further on go to show you, dear judge, that not only this is, they tell they tell us that this is not the only way, dear judge. To, this is not the only way, dear judge, that HIV AIDS is transmitted. But dear judge, I had idea highlighted in this, dear judge, and showed you that yes, in our world, we are fronting to bring that to cut down HIV transmission through rates that are bringing about HIV transmission up to a percentage of 87 percent. So if team gov if team opposition feels that yes, the 13 percent that they front for is better than what we as team government are fronting for of the 87 percent, if they if they think that they are more justified to take up the 13 percent and ignore the 87 percent, I believe they will take this thing. But based on issues of the lesser evil DIA, I believe, and for the greater good of society, I believe that we cutting the 87 percent is going to give team government the sense on this debate, dear judge. Dear judge, I'll go on, dear judge. They tell us it's going to infringe on people's privacy, dear judge. Now, dear judge, they, that is the right to autonomy, the right to free choice and everything. They tell us, they tell us that the medics, dear judge, have the right not to reveal your, have the right not to reveal your, your status or everything. But dear judge, first of all, a right does not, a right does not stand in society. This is a law that stands. That your right is not justified as long as it's going to infringe on other people's rights, dear judge. So if they are talking of their right of autonomy, dear judge, and your right of autonomy, dear judge, is infringing on my right as your partner to good health, dear judge, I believe that that right won't stand out, dear judge. I believe that team government is going to win on this stance of a right, dear judge. I believe that since I'm fronting for one's right, I'm fronting for my own rights, dear judge. I believe that this will better be achieved, dear judge. Dear judge, furthermore, I would love to show you the greater good. Would you front for one's health? Over, over the health of the public, dear judge. We actually believe that in our case, we are fighting for the health of society as a good, dear judge, other than what they seem to bring on board, dear judge. Dear judge, we conclude by asking them what has been done in the current model to demean stigma, and we highlight it, and we are showing them that we are bringing something better, actually. Then we ask them conclusively as I'm getting done, would you rather prioritize one's HIV, would you rather prioritize one's HIV status and not disclose it out to anybody? Or rather disclose it out to society and everybody knows and we reduce the transmission in a long run. With this, I beg to affirm the Lord is faithful. information, right? That is that even before that, this is vulnerable information, right? 
this is information about your Bible Lord, whether you are taking your ARV and even who you are and a person, right? This is vulnerable information that shouldn't be put out in the public, right? But not even that, right? We don't believe that they can actually stop people on their side of the house because this already exists in status quo. They mentioned it in their second and third speech that organizations like TASO are already working on these people and informing them about HIV, right? So we don't see the need of them going that extra mile to actually reveal such vulnerable information, right? But not even that. So the issue of incrimination, again, this is something that exists in status quo, but I don't believe that this will work on the side of the house, particularly because this is outside of the debate, right? So we actually win on stigmatization. Then, um, and then we come in our second speech and we actually give you how stigmatization is actually more likely on the side of the house, right? We come and we tell you from our first speech characterization that this is a conservative society, right? This looks like people are not going to accept it just because you, um, you are you have told them that you have HIV, right? These people will actually come and attack you or will actually stigmatize you. We give you three levels of analysis on an individual level, on a family level, and even on a societal level, right? We come and we tell you as an individual, you are going to be stigmatized. Families are going to be stigmatized. They are going to be like, oh, that one's family has a person with HIV, right? People will actually disassociate in such a family. That is how that is detrimental on that side of the house, right? They actually win on the pleasure of stigmatization. They come and they tell you that, uh, that HIV transmission and that they actually stop this on their side of the house. Right? The only analysis you get from the side of the house on how they stop this is that people are actually going to know who you are so they will take precaution. Right? At a point in time where even in their third speech they come and they tell you that um, it is there is more stigma when people get to know your status and when you reveal it to them or that like there is precaution people will actually take precaution because of the gravity of the age and not knowing who you are. Then we think that you actually win on this pursuit, on this um clash as well, right? That is that there we don't need to actually have these HIV individuals who are actually also stakeholders in this debate, right? We believe that you should tell these people information uh, to know the gravity of it such that they can take precaution. We don't need to tell them these people personalized and tell them such vulnerable information. So because of that you also win on that clash, right? They come and they tell you how um there is individualism so that they get um togetherness in society so society will help them. Let me tell you how this is unrealistic, right? We showed you how uh, society is conservative. But not even that. Society does not have the incentive to help you as an HIV individual. This is something that the government does. So we don't care how society is actually going to help them or be like, oh, you haven't taken your HIV, go and take them, right? This is something that is actually very unrealistic on their side of the house, right? Then they come and they present to you utilitarianism, agency, and even necessity. Let me show you how they lose out on all those three principles, right? But on utilitarianism. Just because pe people will actually believe what they want to believe, right? So at a point in time, when they come and they reveal this information, right? But this is not going to stop people from actually stigmatizing you. This is going to give them uh, more, uh, this is going to give them the more authority to stigmatize you, right? They're going to know who you actually are and they'll come to get you, right? So people will believe what they want to believe. This is not going to actually change their mindset. This actually takes me to their other argument about mindset, right? We don't see how people's mindset is actually going to change on their side of the house because at the end of the day, this is something that is being worked on on such a school. That is that this such a school is something that doesn't uh, um, happen only on their side of the house, but, only, but also on uh, our, right? So notice that we also this status quo is something that we also have on our side of the house, so it's not exclusive on that side of the house, eh? And then they come and they also tell you the agents, right? You don't believe that this is agent, you don't believe that you're feeling vulnerable information about people is agent, because at the end of the day, precautions are being put into place, right? So by the time these precautions are being put into place and they actually accept that it is reducing, right? Just not as fast as they want it to. We don't see how this is agent. This is something that is a process. It's not going to take um, a blink of an eye and then um, HIV has been stopped. This is why Vision 2030 is not actually next month or the next week. It's in a few years time to come, right? Something that they don't understand on their side of the house, right? Then they come and they tell you how when these individuals um, actually go to medical departments, they're going to get um, therapy and acceptance and emotional stability and all that, right? This is something that already exists in status quo. Everything that they present to you is things that they already exist. The only thing is that on their side of the house, they have more stigma. On their side of the house, they actually don't benefit the government, right? But not to mention that on their side of the house, they come and they present to the government as a person who actually has major power, right? And they actually come and they tell you how um, the pay to privacy for these people does not actually matter because the government is actually doing it for the greater good, right? Not just how on their side of the house, they're actually supporting the government to use the coercive power they have, right? This looks like they would even also support the dictatorship, right? But not only that, we showed in our second speech how this is actually going to impact the government, right? This is going to look like people actually losing out 
on uh, trust in their government and people re being uncooperative to their government because the government has violated their rights. Right? At a point in time, when the society is not benefited, even the government is not benefited. So even when they make a take over, they lose out, right? But I'm telling you that, right? We come in our speech and to present to you three stakeholders society, these HIV individuals, and also the government, right? That is how we actually help society at this point in time, right? Because we make sure that this society does not actually go and um, does not actually stigmatize these individuals because of these precautions, and we make sure that the government actually doesn't go against their right of the house, right? Take all the analysis to get on the side of the house on how it benefits the government. That is that the government better achieves the um, the social contract because it's actually helping their, these individuals. They are all, they are providing these condoms and these um three things. Right? Something that exists on the side of the house is where a rift is created between the society and the government because the, because the government has gone against a right of, for the society. Right? This rift is going to actually have a report effect, and this is going to look like people being uncooperative and people actually not trusting their government. Something that doesn't actually. Um, help them in any way, right? And then we come and we present to you the principle of non maliciousness. We show you how there is no need to bring about needless harm, right? At a point in time, where these HIV individuals go to the hospital, but there is confidentiality that they hold with their doctors, what more authority do you have as a government to come and go against this confidentiality, right? So this is something that they also lose out on this side of the debate. Um, we come, uh, I believe the team of Opposition has actually won this debate because, first of all, we come and we show you how we better achieve our debate. We come and we present to you and we refute their whole case. Right? We come and we show you how the house actually um, better on their side of the house and how we have better impact on our side of the house. Right? We would have accepted to lose this debate if, one, they had come and they showed us how the government has um, a moral authority to go against these rules. If they had shown us how there is necessity of doing this, despite the harm that will take place and how we should ignore this. Uh, that is, they do not engage on any of that and they actually accept the harm that um, exists on their side of the house. So we don't believe that they should actually take up this particular way, right? But even if, even if we had gone away with our whole entire case and acted like this should be the, this should be put into place um, nonetheless, right? Even if it uh, didn't affect anyone. That is, that is that, yeah, it still goes against the government. The government is actually going to become um, in a point a dictator. And with that, I conclude taking the ballot to the Thank you. Letting my reply speech in three, two, one. Chair, two problems you see with Tender Farmadi. One, they live in a utopia where everyone is like Mother Teresa and is willing to help you. Two, they're impatient. One, on that first argument, we think at a point in time where they make the assertion that just because society knows that you have HIV AIDS, they'll actually help you, give you food if you don't have it as per that second speaker. We think that's merely an assertion because society does not have the incentive to help you. Not everyone cares about you in society. What my second speaker takes and explains to you in society is that this information is not provided to your family or someone who cares about you. It's provided to the whole country whether you love me or not. This is something they don't understand on the side of the house, right? Two, the whole idea of impatience. At a point in time where the third and second speaker comes and tells us that, hey, we think that there are measures that have been put in place by government and they have not worked. Let me show you why. At a point in time where government informed people about the use of condoms, people know that they're supposed to use, con use condoms, but they could not access it. Government went a further step of providing free condoms for. This is something that is very current, right? At a point in time where these things are actually provided, they're not supposed to just wake up the next morning and ex ex expect HIV privilege to actually use. One thing they actually argue on the side of the house are one, the existence of these measures, right? Two, they argue that the whole idea, the, the whole idea of these measures failing to work. What you get from our side of an analysis is that these things cannot work at the, in the blink of an eye. We need time. That is why government started first informing people about using condoms and then providing them for free. Two, we think on the whole idea of urgency, then they then they then lose, right? Sure, we're coming to prevent, prevent for present to us a utilitarian principle. We show you how necessarily that works better on the side of the house, because at a point in time where I provide you some information, it does not mean that you will change your preferences at the end of the day. Knowing who has HIV or AIDS does not change my ideology about HIV or AIDS. Knowing if you're taking ARVs or not does not make me hate you less or does not make me hate AIDS less. Chair, 
But to get from an affirmative side of the house is necessarily a government that entirely uses their coercive power to actually go or necessarily the power that they have to go against the will of their people because they think it best benefits them. Even then, we show you that this is not something that best benefits them. They say they're arguing for what is in the best interest of the government. The government is only happy when the poor are happy. This is why Uganda is a democratic country in the first place. When our people are happy, they'll vote me into power because they are happy with the rules that have been passed into place, with the rules that have been played. What you don't have on that side of the house is an unhappy public. They fail to show how infringing, how this necessarily affects an HIV positive individual positively in the, po in the point of emotion, right? Let's say all their arguments appear on both sides of the world. What they then fail to do necessarily is prove to us necessarily how those things exist more on the side of the house than our side of the house. They fail to engage in any of our arguments, the principle of non maleficence right? They also come and they also come and provide to us some counter principles of the whole idea of harm's principle. When you're right to autonomy, harm's majority right, then you should take it. But they fail to mechanize this argument and show us exactly how this particular right to autonomy harms majority right. What to show you is that this actually harms majority right because one, it's harming three stakeholders, stakeholders that they fail to actually acknowledge this debate. One, the government, two, individual, and three, society. Why do we win on this crowd? To show you one, th there's no need for urgency. Two, there's, there's no necessity for this particular law. And three, it's not justified for government to actually exercise their coercive power. I rest my case, give the team, give the ballot to team negative. God is faithful. The biggest question that has come from team opposition in today's debate is largely what moral, what moral ground supports the government to do such a thing. And yes, dear judge, we want to accept that, well, there must be a moral ground that supports us. But then, dear judge, I do not know how many people in the public were consulted before the government imposed a lockdown during the COVID-19 pandemic. I think that as such, dear judge, the government has a moral responsibility and obligation to protect the best interests of people. And as such, dear judge, we think we are putting priority on protecting public uh, health, dear judge. And as such, dear judge, I think that is a satisfactory answer here. Two, dear judge, I think that the other obligation that the government has in this kind of debate is one to ensure not only sanctity of the people's lives, but also the quality of people of the people of the people's life. And as such, dear judge, I think that we are really back here. Two, dear judge, I think that on the issue of utilitarianism, one, we think that the, 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 the main actor in this debate, being government, is achieving the most. Because one, we are looking at the problems that are inherent in the current status quo. We think that one. By the social contract theory, dear judge, we think that the government has the right to trump on your uh, on your on your rights if it is for your own good. And as such, dear judge, we think that we are also not only looking at just your own good, dear judge, we are looking at the, the greater good of all the rest of the people. And as such, dear judge, I think that the government has the right to protect the most citizens, as they they also highlighted Uganda being a democratic country. And as such, dear judge, I think that the decisions that are supposed to be taken by a democratic government are those that are best in the interest of the majority of people. And as such, dear judge, I think we also win on that ground. To dear judge, I, when they mentioned the issue that we are debating a utopia where people are less likely going to, uh, to they are not like Mother Teresa. Oh, sweet Mother Teresa. Oh, I love that. Dear judge, we must note that one, they said that there is a possibility of a 5% that are actually going to care. And actually, dear judge, I think that 5% in the Uganda's population is a very significant figure that are going to help us in such. To dear judge, I cite, we cited out in the very first speech that one, the tassel is there, but the services are not being consumed because we do not know who is there to consume them. And as such, dear judge, we think that NGO, NGOs are being the means of executing their power of helping such people. And on those grounds, dear judge, I love that. Now, dear judge, I want us to note that one, stigma on the two worlds. One, we must note that the question that must be most prevalent in this debate is where does the stigma affect more? Is it stigma? Is it worse stigma for, it, for the people to look at you and they already know is that worse stigma or worse stigma is where people are just gossiping about your status? I think that also on those grounds, the stigma that they are trying to create in this debate is largely on our side. To the judge, I think that for the issue of stigma, we have seen that they are prevailing the current status quo. But then, dear judge, in our model, we have said that we are now getting prison to incriminate the people that are actually carrying out the stigma. And on those grounds, up to now, it has not yet been answered of how they are the best relates the people that are uh, carrying out such stigma. Two dear judge, we must note that one, uh, we must note that one, for this kind of stigma that they are trying to argue in today's debate, we must note that what we are trying, we are trying to create after the, after showing you what someone needs when they have uh, committed the disease, we think that the kind of society we need is one that is very inclusive.
that brings me to the three principles that must be weighed in on to win this kind of debate. We must also note that the people that will that we tell this may not necessarily change their ideology. But then they are judged. I do not want to think that when you look at a blind man, you are going to ask them to to read for you the number plate of the car that is passing by. I think that they are judged. That is the kind of inclusive society that we are trying to create here. Because now we are feeding the people with the knowledge. To the judge, that is kind of inclusiveness. To the judge, I want to think that even if you hate an albino, the judge, you when you are not going to throw that right in their face, and that means the judge, in as much as your ideology may not change, your expression towards such people is going to change. And as such, the judge, I think we win on that. To the judge, they talk about we talk about a, a more in, a more cooperative society where we think that the fight against AIDS is not just largely supposed to be by one person but rather by the community, which they also want to argue that in the, in the case of urgency, we have since fought with the current status quo since the 1980s, and as such, the agenda, up to now, we are prevailing. But then the issue of urgency largely runs in this debate that we are only left with seven years to achieve the kind of society that we are looking for. We also think that on the matter of necessity, this being the biggest composer of the people that are not consuming AIDS and therefore contracting HIV, must be taken into note. And as largely that, the Lord is faithful. Make two. Team Affirmative, they, they, they prove that for us to control the spread of HIV, 
HIV. We have so we have to control stigma, we have to control spread of HIV. How do we do this? When the when team government decides to expose everything about HIV, to disclose those information to every prospective citizen, it will show it will prove to it will act as a deterrent and to control the spread of HIV. Therefore, according to me, team affirmative took it all together.